once again to another mathematics workout with me, Mr. Chai, right? Uh, today our topic is on coordinate geometry, right? You can see the description below, right? Okay, now let's get started with this. <coughs> Now, before we get started, let's, um, as usual, read the question and try to uh, understand the requirement. Right? Now, in this case, we need to find the coordinates of the point. Uh, so, is a point uh, at which uh, the perpendicular bisector of the line joining uh, this point to this point meets the x-axis. Now, in order to fully understand what we are looking at, we can try to sketch out uh, a rough visual representations of uh, this instruction here. Right? <clears throat> okay, so find the coordinates of the point at which the perpendicular bisector uh, of the line joining this mid uh, the x-axis. So basically, it will look something like this. So just uh, let me sketch out the uh, visual representation first. So we have um, an x-axis and then we have uh, a y-axis here. <coughs> and then we have uh, two points. So one may be somewhere here. And then uh, we have another one. Uh, okay, hold on. So I think I drew it wrongly here. So it's not really fit the description. So hold on. So maybe just let me clean up the whole Cartesian coordinates. Okay, just let me sketch one more time. Right. So it will look something like this uh, at a point of a two seven. So this is two seven. Um, maybe I'll label it as point A. And then uh, to the point 10, 3. So 10, 3 might be somewhere here. Let's call that uh, point B. Right. <clears throat> so here it says that uh, the line joining point A and B. Right? <clears throat> uh, we need to work out the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular mean 90 degree to this line AB. Bisector uh, basically mean this perpendicular line um, that cut through the line AB at the midpoint uh, of this uh, uh, cut through the midpoint between A and B. Right? So that's what it meant by perpendicular bisector. So 90 degrees to the line and then this perpendicular line passes through the midpoint between A and B there. Uh, therefore, uh, this perpendicular line will look something like this. Perpendicular. So this part is perpendicular. Right. <clears throat> and then uh, it passes through the midpoint uh, between A and B. And then this perpendicular line uh, meet the x-axis again at this uh, point here. Let's label this as C. And then uh, there is a uh, an uh, there's an information that we know about this position or, or this point C here. Uh, it has um, an x value, x coordinate. Uh, yeah, up to you though. In this case, we can just call it uh, x. Uh, but the y coordinate is a zero. So this is the, uh, one of the extra informations we knew about this uh, point uh, where the perpendicular line uh, cut the x-axis. Right. Now once we fully understand the visual representations, we are ready to solve this uh, problem. Right. <clears throat> so find that coordinates of the point, which means this is the one that we are are looking for this is this will be our objective okay all right so firstly 
Um, now there are many ways to approach this. Uh, for me, I would uh, seek for the midpoint. Right? So I would try to find out the midpoint between A and B. So midpoint between A and B. Now uh, this midpoint um, M okay, has this uh, uh, coordinates here. <coughs> So it has these coordinates of uh, 2 plus 10 and then uh, 7 plus 3. So this will be the coordinates for M in this case, which is the midpoint between A and B. So if we try to simplify that, we have 6 and a 5. And then there you go. We have uh, managed to find the coordinate for the midpoint. Alright, now next, um, next we're going to find the equation of the perpendicular line. Uh, to do that, what we need is the gradient. It's the gradient for this perpendicular line. So we need to find the gradient for this perpendicular line. Right. <clears throat> so let's try to work out the gradient. <clears throat> Uh, before you can work out the gradient for the perpendicular line, uh, we must work out the gradient for line AB. So gradient for line AB. Let's just call this uh, MAB then. <coughs> okay, now that will be 7 by 3 and then 2 by 10. Uh, so here we will have a negative half. Okay, just let me check for a while. Uh, that will be a negative four. Uh, sorry, it's a four negative eight. So negative half there. Right. Now next, in order to get the gradient for the perpendicular line, uh, let's call this um, gradient as M P. Then, okay. So to get the gradient of the perpendicular line. It must satisfy this uh, this rule, uh, the gradient, the product of this uh, gradient of perpendicular line with uh, the line, the gradient of AB must be negative one if they are perpendicular to each other. Right? <clears throat> so from here we can obtain the uh, gradient for the perpendicular line in red color, uh, which is. In this case, if we try to simplify that, you will get uh, a gradient of 2. Therefore, uh, therefore, we can work out the equations for the perpendicular line. So the equation of the perpendicular line uh, that That passes through midpoint M. Right. <clears throat> that passes through midpoint M uh, is uh, there are many ways to work out the uh, line equation. So here I just use one of the methods. So we can actually use uh, this where we have this. Now at this point, you can leave your answer here. Or if you like the y-intercept form, uh, you can write as 2x, um, in this case what we have, negative a 12, and then that will be a 7. <coughs> yep. So that will be the equations for this perpendicular line. And then, finally, we are going to make use of this result here uh, to find out where this perpendicular line uh, cut the axis. <clears throat> so as we know the y coordinate for this point C is 0. So we will let, uh, sorry, I think I use a better word here. Um, <coughs> at x axis, okay, so we pass through the x axis, uh, the y coordinate is equal to 0. So therefore we will let the y equal to 0. That would give us this x will be 
three point five. And then uh, from here, we managed to find where this perpendicular line actually meet the axis. So the the perpendicular line meet the axis at this point C that has this uh, coordinate here. 3.5, 0. <coughs> okay, so I hope that is clear to everyone. Okay, uh, as usual, if you have, um, if you manage to spot any errors, uh, do drop your comment. Um, yep, I will try to fix it. And then I'm very happy if you are able to point out the errors. And not only you are learning, uh, I am reflecting on my errors also. So it's a win-win situation. Yep. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the second one. Okay, so before that, let me clean up the space that I'm having here. <clears throat> All right, now second question. <clears throat> Uh, let's read that through. Uh, the point A has a coordinate uh, given as 3, 1, and the point B has a coordinate negative 21, 11. Uh, point C is the midpoint of AB. We need to find the equation of the line uh, that actually passes through A uh, that is uh, 90 degree or perpendicular to this uh, straight line here. <coughs> And then finally, we need to work out the distance of AC. AC. Right. <clears throat> okay, so as usual, we're going to sketch out um, the Cartesian coordinates. Uh, at least it gives us a, a reference visual uh, understanding of what we are looking at. So from here, we can see that we have a few points here. We have uh, 3, 1 somewhere here. Uh, it's labeled as point A. So I'll just label as point A. And then we have uh, another point B, which is located at negative uh, 31, 11. So this is point B, negative 21, 11 here. Okay, and then point C is the midpoint between uh, A and B. So midpoint between A and B, uh, somewhere here, let's label that as midpoint. We need to find the equation of the line uh, passes through A. That is, oh sorry, here they already mentioned that point C is the midpoint. So I might want to change the labeling just to fit in uh, the context here. <coughs> so the midpoint is a C. The point is a C. Okay. Now we need to work out the equation on the line that passes through A here. Uh, that is perpendicular to uh, that is perpendicular to this line here. Y equal to x uh, minus seven. Right. <coughs> so y equal to 2x minus 7 so we have now uh, we might want to sketch out this uh, this straight line here which is 2x minus 7 so it has a positive gradient uh, passes through negative uh, 7 here for instance so we have a straight line that passes through here and then um, we need to work out a straight line equation uh, that passes through a that is uh, 90 degree or perpendicular to this uh, line here and then this is somewhere at uh, 3.5 it passes through the x-axis at 3.5 so therefore we are looking at uh, this particular line so this is the line that we are looking at okay this line has this equation y equal to 2x uh, minus 7 so now we have to work out a straight line. Uh, we have to work out a straight line that passes through A that is 90 degree to this uh, line here. So it might actually look something like 
this for instance there is 90 degree passes through A and then um, 90 degree to this uh, line here so this is the equation of the straight line that we need to uh, look for okay so now we are clear okay. now we are clear how to actually find um, that equation <clears throat> okay so now we are uh, quite ready okay uh, now bear in mind this is a rather rough sketch um, whether this line actually passes through the 3.5 we will be able to figure out but at this point of time uh, this is how the drawing look like right okay so let's uh, try to apply the algebra to fit in the context of the geometry <coughs> okay. now let's get this uh, started okay so first of all uh, we need to get the gradient of this uh, line that is perpendicular to the line y equal to 2x minus 7. Now we know that uh, gradient gradient of line y equal to 2x minus 7 is okay here I might just label it as M1 then eh? it's easier to refer in a while let's call this gradient as M1 equal to 2 uh, therefore uh, the gradient of the perpendicular line let's call this M2 uh, let gradient of the uh, perpendicular line I'll let the gradient of the perpendicular line to y equal to 2x minus 7 um, as m2. So in this case, it implies that m1, the product of uh, these two gradients, must be equal to negative 1 then. And then uh, this would, would lead us to get to obtain the uh, gradient of the perpendicular line. Uh, which is negative half and then we know that this perpendicular line passes through the point A uh, okay so therefore uh, therefore the equation uh, the equation required here equation you can actually make it short here the equation required uh, is given as So at this point, as I mentioned before, you can leave your answer as it is, or you would like to simplify that in the intercept form, which is half of x. Um, what do we have here? Plus uh, 2.5. So that is actually 5 over 2. This is 3 over 2 plus, so it's 5 over 2. You can either leave it in the intercept form, or if you like, you can leave it in the uh, uh, general standard form so the general standard form will look something like this uh, we need to get rid of any uh, fraction in this case so it will be x plus 2y there <coughs> and then uh, minus a 5 equals zero. so this is the general um, equation for the straight line okay. so we have successfully uh, answer this question here. I hope that is clear. All right. Now, second one. Second section. Find the distance AC. Oh, you need to find the distance AC. <coughs> so, how am I going to find uh, the distance AC? It's quite uh, direct here. All you need to do is obtain the midpoint for C. So uh, midpoint, so we start off by evaluating the midpoint C. In this case, it's quite obvious. We have um, a 9. I'll just work this out uh, quickly here. Oh, sorry. Negative 9 
and then there is a 6. So this is the midpoint for C. And then thereafter, we're going to apply the Pythagoras theorem to get the distance of AC. Okay. I better not use this uh, symbol, it's just my bad habit. Uh, maybe I'll correct this. So distance. Uh, distance between AC is given as <coughs> uh, it's given as um, 3 minus negative 9 square and then um, 1 minus 6 square here and then don't forget uh, square root the result so in this case we have like 12 square and then you have your uh, 5 square so that is um, if a number second is one four four twenty five one uh, one four four twenty five one six nine it should be a thirty. So the distance AC is thirteen units. Um, that concludes our second section. So I hope that is clear to everyone. <clears throat> let's get a larger eraser here. Let's screen up the screen. Okay. Right. Third question. Let's move on to the third question. Alright. Now, I, I think at this point we are more comfortable with the third question here because they have set up uh, the visual guideline uh, for all the information presented. Uh, just read through in case we miss out any information that we did not put into the uh, Cartesian coordinate. So here we have uh, in the diagram A is point given as negative 1, 3. B is the point 3, 1. Uh, now the line L1 passes through the uh, passes through point A and is uh, parallel it's mentioned that parallel to all B, okay, parallel to all B, okay. <clears throat> and then the line uh, L2 passes through B and is perpendicular to the line AB then, right, for obvious. Now line L1 and L2 meet at the point uh, C, then. so we need to find the coordinate uh, C, that is our objective, okay, sometime I tends to write down here so that uh, I can, s I can uh, narrow down my focus uh, so that even though we have a lot of uh, ideas going on at least we can achieve our, our final objective uh, in, in a while right? <clears throat> okay so we have so many information here how can we make use of all these informations to locate the coordinate for C here all right so let's look at what we have. Uh, now the big picture in this case would be, um, well, if you use the simplest uh, idea, is to basically work out. Uh, now I, I would say the strategy would be uh, work out the equation. So work out the equation for line L one, and then work out the equations for line. L2 and then by solving the equations for L1 and L2 uh, it will show us the intersection point between these two uh, line equations <clears throat> so we can start by working out the equations for line L1 first we know that um, in this case line L1 has the same gradient as line OB so both of these have the same gradient. Therefore, uh, I can work out the gradient for this. So just let me do it here. It's easier. So gradient, uh, gradient for this line is given as so I label down as uh, OB. It's easier to refer here. Uh, it is quite obvious in this case, uh, which is actually one over three. Now uh, that will be the gradient. Therefore, uh, this line would also have the same gradient as 1 over 3. 
and then we knew that there's a point where this line is, uh, passes through uh, then we can work out the uh, for line okay, for line L1 so it has this equation here We can leave it as it is, or we can work out its uh, intercept form, and then there will be a 10 over 3. Or if you like, you can work out its uh, standard form. So I'll try to write out all the forms uh, in this case. So we have x minus 3y plus a 10 equal to 0. <coughs> Now our next intention is to obtain the equations for um, line number two here. Okay, to work out the equations for line number two, we need to know its uh, gradient. Now we know that AB is perpendicular to the line L two, so we're going to make use of uh, the gradient of AB here. So let's call this gradient as MAB. Let's try to work out the gradient for line AB here. Uh, that will be a 3 minus a 1 and then negative 1 minus a 3 here. Right. So in this case you have like 2 over negative uh, 4, so negative half. Here. <coughs> that will be the gradient for AB. Right? Therefore, um, gradient for line 2, let's call this uh, gradient as M2. Now for this we know that MAB, the product of uh, gradient of line AB and the gradient of line 2 must be negative 1. Here. <coughs> so from here uh, we can work out the gradient for line L2 uh, which is a 2 in this case. <coughs> Did I get it right? Okay, let me check. Yes, so the gradient of line 2 is a 2. Now we are ready to obtain the equations for line L2. For line L2 uh, would be Okay, there you have it. Uh, this is uh, rather simple to work with. So negative 5. Yeah. Now, knowing these two equations, as we uh, knew before this, we are going to solve these two simultaneous equations. So we have our first equation, we have the second equation. So all we need, all, all we need to do is uh, solve 1 and 2. So by solving, I'm actually going to apply substitution method, or you can apply elimination method or any other methods that you see fit here. Okay. So if I substitute number 2 into number 1, I will have this. Okay, so let's see what we have. Uh, we have negative 5x, uh, we have uh, here 15, 25. Uh, therefore, we found that x is equal to a 5 <coughs> okay. and then uh, because x is equal to a 5 uh, therefore by using equation 1 or 2 uh, that will yield the y coordinate uh, for that intersection point as okay so if this is a 5 y will be 5 also uh, therefore uh, the point at intersection c will have this coordinate 5 5 So I hope that is uh, clear to everyone. Uh, now it's always good to check, as I mentioned before. Uh, you can use any other alternative method to check. Alright, so the checking part, I'll leave it to you. Okay. Let, just let me clear this. We're going to move on to the next one. <coughs> okay, let's see. Okay, we have another uh, question where we are presented with a visual representation, so it's, uh, it's easier to digest uh, all this information. All right. 
So no harm, just to read through the instructions one more time in case we miss out uh, any sections that we need. Right. Now the diagram shows part of the curve, uh, even as this uh, rational function. And then we also have a straight line, 3x plus 4. <coughs> the curve and the line meet at the point A and B. Now we can see that from the graph itself. And our first question is to find out the coordinate for A and B. Okay. Um, question 2. Find the length of the line AB and the coordinate of the midpoint of AB. So always try to organize your thought before you do anything. Uh, to find coordinate for AB, basically we are trying to solve uh, these two equations simultaneously. Right, that's for number 1. Once we solve that, we should be able to obtain the distance between uh, AB by using Pythagoras uh, theorem. And then finally to get the midpoint, we can apply the uh, formula for the midpoint between AB. Okay, let's get started. Now, let's try to solve this simultaneously. Um, to speed up the process, I will just call this equation number one, this one equation number two here. Um, now, I'm using substitution, so I'm, I'm going to say that because both of them is y, uh, therefore I can write it down as 3x plus 4 is equal to 2, 1 minus x. <coughs> and then we will have 3x plus 4, 1 minus x is equal to 2. <coughs> so through expansion, I will have um, what I have here. Let me check here. So we have 3x, we have minus x, and then plus a 4, plus a 4, plus a 2, equal to 0. After we simplify that. Um, from my perspective, I prefer the coefficient where x squared to be positive, uh, but it's up to your liking. Alright, so this is uh, what we have at, at this point, and then we can uh, factorize that as uh, 3x minus 2, x plus 1 equal to 0. So just let me check one more time to see whether we get this correct. Okay, so we got this correct. Uh, x would yield a negative 1 or 2 over 3. Mm -hmm. So the negative 1, visually, uh, we will be quite sure A must have uh, an x coordinate of negative 1, whereby B, the x coordinate is 2 over 3. <coughs> so that is what we have. Uh, so far, how are we going to get the y coordinate for a then, for instance? So, for a, x is equal to negative 1. Therefore, you're going to substitute this back to any one of these. Uh, preferable, use the straight line because the equation is easier to uh, handle. But then again, by all means, you can use the first one. Both would tell you. So, you can use that as a tool for checking. Right. So in this case, we will get y equal to 1. Uh, you can also check uh, roughly using the second equation. Yes, it will also u a 1. Therefore, you can straight away conclude the coordinate for a as negative 1, 1. Now as for point b, uh, for point b, x is equal to uh, 2 over 3. And then again, all you need to do is substitute into any one that is more comfortable to you. I think uh, equation number 2 is more comfortable to me. So therefore, I'm going to substitute this. And then I will end up with a 6 there. So just let me roughly uh, check that one more time. Yeah, it's a 6. Therefore, uh, B, the coordinate B is 2 over 3 and then a 6 there. So mark that since we have done. Solving simultaneously and then obtain the coordinate A and B. And now we need to find the length of AB, which is the distance. So length AB, which is the distance. All I need to do is 
um, take the distance between A and B here. Right? So let's see what we have here. We have uh, 5 over 3. I'm going to take a bit of shortcut uh, for my subtraction here. And then this is like 5 squared. <coughs> so in this case, um, I will have like a 5 and then that is um, 5, 2, 10. So, so that will be a 10. So that will be 5 and then 1, 1. So 1, 1, that will be a 9 and a 10. So that will be a 10. So root 10. If you check the final answer there, it will be a root 10, is it root 10, hold on, so let me check, so that is actually 5, and then we have here root 10, and then uh, over 3, so that is uh, what we have here, uh, it's not over 3, sorry, it's over 9, yeah, it's over 9, okay. <coughs> So I'm here you can further simplify this uh, as 5 over 3 so 10. So you can leave this as it is. Uh, then again, it's always good to check because I, I do this in a different way because I want to obtain the answer easily. So I might want to recheck again in case. Again, just let me ponder upon my calculation. Uh, we have 5. Mm, that will be a 9, okay, 1, 9, 9, a 10, so therefore a 3 there, yep, okay, so there you have it, the distance between A, B is this. Now number 2, uh, we still have one more section, find the coordinate of the midpoint between A, B, so midpoint, uh, between A and B right now that will be given as uh, that will be quite direct since we know the A and B right, we're going to add that up negative 1 over 3 negative 1 over 6 negative 1 over 6 here let me check whether that I got that correct so uh, that is, uh, let me see what we have here. Mm, uh, that will be a negative 1 over 3 divided by 2, negative 1 over 6. And then the y coordinate, okay, in this case we have um, mm, 7. So. Now just to check roughly, that will be around negative 1 over 6 and then 3.5 there. 3.5 around here. We know that this y intercept is a 4 and then our uh, answer for the midpoint is somewhere here. So it fit in this uh, description quite uh, nicely. Right? Okay. So I hope uh, everyone is clear on the technique that we are using. So spend more time on the graph and then uh, plane or come up with a solid strategy before you dive into the technicality. Alright, okay, so we're done. We're going to move on to the next one. <coughs> okay. Number five. Okay. Here we are. Now the point R is the reflection of the point negative one three in the line, okay? Or sometimes you can say about the line three y plus two x equal to the three. Then. <coughs> so that's a reflection. Okay? So we need to find by calculations the coordinate uh, for R here, the coordinate for R, right? <coughs> So this is a reflection, it's always good to draw out the diagram. Okay, just let me try this out. That is something like this. 
Okay, we have a point negative one three somewhere here. Uh, let's try to sketch this uh, straight line uh, before we continue any uh, any further here. Okay. So we found that uh, when x is equal to zero, the y is actually eleven, so it's maybe somewhere eleven here. And then when the y is zero, and then the x will become um, what we have uh, 16.5 so 16.5 is around here okay. and then therefore uh, this line would look something like this okay uh, now I'm going to label this line here 3y plus 2x equal to 33 okay I'm almost there and then I have also another point negative 1 uh, a tree, so somewhere here, negative one tree. Uh, maybe I'll label this as a point A here. Okay. Uh, now we have a point R, is the reflections of this point about this line here, which means it's going to be reflected um, about this line perpendicularly to this point R, X and Y. Now that will be the objective for this question here. We need to figure out what is the uh, coordinate for R. <coughs> okay. So let's see how to work this out. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are many ways to actually work this out. Okay. Uh, First of all, I'm going to show you the uh, more straightforward method in this case, uh, based on your understanding of uh, geometry coordinates. Uh, I, I think at this point, uh, you guys would tend to focus more on the coordinates uh, side of the application rather than the geometry uh, perspective in this case because uh, the tool that we are using for coordinate is more versatile and then uh, maybe it's faster in this context uh, but uh, the geometry perspective will be more powerful in some uh, some cases right they are pro and con okay so first of all uh, strategy okay I would <coughs> I would try my best to find um, a straight line equation, a perpendicular line to this uh, line, 3y plus 2x equal to 33. So my first intention is to work out an equation for this perpendicular line uh, to this particular line. And then we know that this perpendicular line uh, meet with uh, this line, 3y plus 2x equal to 33 at this point here. Now there are some extra information you need to know about this. This point is basically the midpoint between A and R. So that would be uh, useful to us in a while. So we need to work out the equation. <clears throat> okay. Working out the equation for the line AR is quite uh, direct in this case since we know the equations here. Uh, so here I will work out the gradient uh, for 3y plus 2x equal to 3 is, okay, I will label this as uh, m1. Okay, so is uh, in this case a negative 2 over 3. So that's the gradient. Uh, therefore, the gradient um, gradient of the perpendicular line. Uh, in this case, I'm referring to line AR. Uh, is given as less. Let me label that as M two then. We know that uh, yeah, beforehand, I always remind myself here, M2 min, um, multiply M1, the product of M1, M2 must be equal to negative 1. Uh, 
uh, therefore that will help us to obtain the gradient for the perpendicular line KR uh, which is the same as 3 over 2 in this case and then now uh, equation of line AR <coughs> line AR will be given as Okay, so you can leave it here, or you would like to simplify it further. For instance, in this case, we have 3 over 2x, and then um, plus a 9 over 2. Okay. Or you can leave it in a standard form, if you like. Okay. So therefore, standard form will be plus a 9 over 2. <clears throat> and then there you have it, you have the um, original form, you have the intercept form, or you can have the general standard form. Okay. Now, once we have obtained this, uh, these equations here, now we can use these equations to obtain the midpoint. Uh, in order to obtain the midpoint, all I need to do is to solve uh, this equation. I will label this as equation number 1 and then I will label this as equation number 2 it's easier to refer to in this case All right, and then I'm going to solve that simultaneously I'll rewrite this over here it's uh, easier for me to relate there plus 3y uh, minus 33 I'll just rearrange that so this is my equation number 2 now up to you how you want to uh, solve this uh, for instance maybe uh, elimination methods will be great for instance uh, 1 times 2 that will give me a, a 6x minus um, hold on. Okay, 6x minus a 4y plus 18 equals you and then next uh, Equation number 2, I can multiply by 3, so there will be 6x plus 9y minus 99. Okay, let's call this the equation A, equation B. <coughs> so from here, you can solve these two equations simultaneously. For instance, you take A, subtract off with the equation B. Uh, A, subtract off with equation B, so we get 13y here. And then uh, this subtract off with this, we have uh, 117. So plus 117 equal to 0. Therefore, therefore your y would be equal to, uh, let me see what we have here, uh, which is a uh, 9. So just nice. <coughs> and then uh, that is the midpoint. Now, once we knew that the y is equal to 9, uh, therefore, you can substitute back into any one of these uh, equations here. You can substitute back here also. So, take for instance, if I'm interested to substitute this one here, uh, I will find that my x is equal to, right? So, there will be a 6, there will be a 3. There will be a 3 and 9. Therefore, the midpoint will be 3, 9. Yeah. Alright, now how are we going to make use of this midpoint to obtain the coordinate for R? Um, okay, now that will be quite direct at this point. We know that, um, we know that x minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to the x coordinate uh, for the midpoint in this case yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, from here you found that x is actually equal to a 7 x is equal to 7 and then next we also know that y plus 3 divided by 2 is actually equal to the uh, 9 therefore your y will be 15.
and then from here onward we can conclude that r will have a coordinate of 750 okay and then there you have it um, a, a more interesting um, approach to coordinate geometry All right so let's move on to the next one Where are we now? We are now at 6. Okay, 6. <clears throat> right, here we have line 1 passes through this uh, point here. And then uh, it also passes through the second point. And the line 2 is parallel to L1. Then passes through the origin. Okay, that's parallel to L1. L1 is parallel to L2, and then L1, um, oh sorry, L2 passes through the origin. <coughs> so the point C lie on L2 such that AC is perpendicular to L2. Now we need to find the coordinates for C and the distance for AC here, right? <coughs> so as usual, uh, sketching first. Let's try to sketch this. We have okay, first of all, let's try to uh, plot these two points here. So two five will be around here A, and then after that we have like ten nine. That will be a B. Right. So we have a line. A line passes through. So that is actually a straight line, for instance. Doesn't look straight, but that is okay. Uh, just let me touch up that. <coughs> okay, so assuming that this is the line that uh, passes through A and B in this case, <coughs> so we are done with L1. So let's label this L1. L2 is parallel to L1 and passes through the origin. Okay, passes through the origin. My drawing is a bit uh, blocking the way here, so just let me clean, it, clean this up. Uh, we have another line which is uh, parallel and then passes through the origin. Okay, so that's not very uh, convincing there. So let me get so a straight line that passes through the origin. Okay, <laughs> that is a uh, that is a uh, lousy drawing. <laughs> okay, just let me get uh try one more. We have a straight line. We have a straight line that is parallel parallel to this line, and then it passes through the origin. Now that is the visual context that we are having at this point. Alright, so this line here, let me label that as L2 is parallel to L1 and then L2 passes through the origin. Point C lies on L2, so let's assume that this is C. So point C lies on uh, L2. Point C line L2. Uh, this point where the line passes through is A. Just let me uh, redraw that again. So that is uh, 2, 5. Okay. And there you have it. And then uh, point C lies on L2 such that AC, okay, AC is perpendicular. So AC didn't draw with uh, precision here so the line AC is 90 degree it's 90 degree to to the line uh, L2 here okay this is uh, not very convincing in this case just just let me redraw it one more time just let me clear everything I think I'll, I'll, I'll just clear the whole thing it's easier for me to draw in this case. So we have 
axis here. Okay. We have a line that passes through here, passes through the point A, and then passes through the point B here. And then we have another line that is passing through the origin. Uh, these two lines are parallel to each other. And then we have another point uh, C here, such that AC is 90 degree to this line 2. This is line 1 here. But now it will be clearer. <coughs> and then now we are ready. Find the coordinate uh, for C. Then. So how do we find the coordinates for C? This case, right? <clears throat> well, let's give that a try. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem in this case. Now, first of all, we know that the gradient for these two lines is the same. Uh, so both both gradient for L one and L two is the same uh, is the same <clears throat> so let's work out the gradient gradient of L1 let's call this M1 that will be given as 9 minus 5 here and then 10 minus uh, 2 uh, 8 so again, it's only two. And therefore, the gradient for this line here, M2, is also given as uh, 1 over 2. <coughs> okay. So let's see whether we can work out um, the coordinate for C. Can we actually work out the coordinate for C? Right. <coughs> the best way is... <coughs> excuse me. The best way is to find out a line that is perpendicular to both lines and then uh, to find the intersections between this perpendicular line <coughs> with the line L2. Uh, then we will be able to locate the coordinate C uh, more easily. So let's work out this uh, and the killer line. Uh, let's work out the equation first. <coughs> uh, to do that, uh, it's quite easy in this case. Uh, first of all, the um, gradient, gradient for line AC, because it's perpendicular to this, uh, the gradient for that is uh, negative 2. Uh, because M1, the product of M1 and AC is equal to negative 1. That's the reason why we end up with negative 2. <clears throat> and now we can work out the uh, equation of line passes through I can say passes through AC. Passes through AC, uh, then that will be Y of 5, and then negative 2, X minus 2. We can leave it in the intercept form here, plus a 9. <coughs> that will be our first equation. <coughs> okay, there you have it. And then uh, equations for L2. Equation for L2 is easier to uh, work out. So equations for L2, just let me clean this up. Equation for L2 is easier to work out in this case because it passes through the origin. So equation for L2 is given as um, half x. Now that will be our second equation. All we need to do now is to solve equation 1 and 2. So solve 1 and 2. So we're going to solve these two. 
Um, it is quite obvious in this case we can use substitution instead of elimination itself. Um, so let me see 502. So if we solve this, we have, uh, let me see what do we have, plus 2, that's a 502, uh, 502, 502, and 6 go to a 9. Nine, yeah, five eighteen zero zero nine, and then um, we have uh, five three three point six. So therefore, your x is equal to three point six. So the x coordinate for c is uh, three point six. Knowing this, we will be able to obtain the y coordinate for c in this case, which is one point eight. Therefore, we can conclude that coordinate C is 3.6 by 1.8. Right, so we're done with C. Okay, I hope that's clear. Uh, now the distance AC. Okay, knowing the coordinate for C, we will be able to work out the distance AC quite uh, directly. So the distance for AC is, okay, in this case we have uh, 3.6 minus a 2 and then uh, 1.8 minus a 5 so from here we have like uh, 1.6 square is it 1.6 square? yes correct and then uh, plus with uh, what we have 3.2 square alright now just let me check the final answer in case. Just let me bring it to the side here. Okay, so just let me key that in for a while. Uh, that is 1.6 screen plus with 3.2 square there. C. So that will give me, uh, let me see what I have. 3.58 so I have 3.58 unit that will be the distance between A and C alright so I hope uh, that is clear uh, with everyone so next yeah of course uh, if you have any other suggestion how to solve this uh, by all means you can pause it in the uh, comment. I would like to uh, hear that from you. Right? <coughs> seven. Okay, seven here. All right, seven. Uh, we have a uh, lots of visual context here, so it will be quite um, comfortable to solve this problem. Right? <coughs> so here we are given a curve. Uh, cube. Oh, sorry. In this case is a um, quintic, it's a quintic uh, polynomial equation and then we also have a straight line equation that passes through the origin uh, all these intersecting at three points uh, now the first question is to show that x coordinate x coordinate of a and b satisfy that particular equation state all right now that is uh, quite direct there Gonna look at that in a while. Uh, solve this equation, which we have ten for number one here, and then uh, hence find the coordinate of a and b. Give your answer in the exact form. Now, this part is very important. All right, let's get started with this. Uh, first of all, because they are meeting uh, each other at point A, O, and B, therefore uh, we are going to solve these two equations simultaneously. Right. So we're going to solve 1 and 2. Solving 1 and 2 by using substitution. So therefore we can write 2xy plus 3x cubed is equal to 2x. And then a true rearrangement, we have 2x5 plus 3x cubed minus 2x is equal to 0. Uh, factorization, so we have x4 plus 3x uh, square minus uh, 2 equal to 0. 
Okay. <clears throat> so from here, we knew that origin is one of the intersection. Uh, that actually gave me um, an idea that one of the value x must be equal to zero. And then, therefore, 2x cubed, uh, sorry, 2x uh, aquatic plus 3x squared minus 2. Uh, it's either x equals 0 or this equation is equal to 0. And then that indirectly prove the first question. So prove it. Right, we are done with number 1. Uh, now we're going to take this and then solve it. Therefore, we can obtain the coordinate for A and B. How do we solve this? Uh, this is indirectly um, a quadratic equation. So just let me rewrite that at the side here. So we can rewrite this as 2x4 plus 3x squared minus 2 plus 0. As we, you can actually write it down like this. This is squared plus 3x squared. So indirectly is a quadratic equation. So if I were to solve this directly without any substitutions at all, I would end up with, uh, in this case, I would end up with uh, 3x squared um, minus 1. And then I would have another x squared plus uh, 2. Okay, so just let me roughly check whether I got this uh, correct. Okay, so plus 4 minus is a 3 minus is 2. Okay, therefore, this is the solution. <clears throat> now, because x squared plus 2 is always greater than 0, cannot be 0, right? it's always greater than 0. Therefore, this expression here uh, cannot be equal to 0. So the only solutions that we can have at this point would be uh, this would uh, indirectly refer to x squared minus 1 equal to 0. So solving this we have x equal to uh, square root of uh, 2 plus or minus. So one of the coordinate uh, is having a minus value. So that is minus 1 over 2. The other one is one over sub two just to check. So once you have done obtaining this, we can obtain the uh, y coordinate. So therefore, uh, here I just write it down a. Uh, a is having a x coordinate of this, and then once I substitute this back into either one of these, for instance, maybe it's easier to substitute into here. Uh, therefore, I will have a negative sub 2, which is somewhere here. Let's just check. And then for coordinate B, as usual, I'm going to substitute a positive 1 over 2 uh, sub back into here, and then that will give me a sub 2. And this part is sub 2. Okay, so I hope that is clear with everyone. Okay. okay, let me clean this up. Let's see, let's move on to eight now. Eight. Okay, for question eight, it says that the curve y equal to 10 over 2x plus 1 minus 2 um, meet the x-axis at A. Now the tangent to the curve at A, the tangent to the curve at A intersect the y-axis at C. We need to show that the equation for AC is given as this. All right, now sketching is utmost important. Uh, now, of course, at this point, it's quite uh, tough to sketch this rational uh, graph, but uh, I will show you the detail here. Okay, let's, let's get the graph done first. Right. <clears throat> so we have uh, something here. Uh, 
times x equal to negative half and then um, as you go to the uh, far section there will be a negative 2 so that will be uh, somewhere here I go to negative 2 here right. <coughs> so when the uh, y intercept I, I'm trying to figure out how the graph look like here so I try to use as many guidelines as possible uh, now of course I will try to produce another videos on how to actually sketch the graph in more detail so here just bear with me uh, let's assume that this is how the graph actually look like <coughs> okay so that is actually an 8 so which means it actually passes through uh, this coordinate 8 here okay so how does the graph look like i would say roughly look something okay like, just let me clean up the 8 then yeah, I would like to put it somewhere 8 here for instance so I'm going to sketch the graph um, okay hold on just let me oh, yeah so therefore the graph will look something like this right <coughs> and then the other side will look something like right this is how the graph uh, look like uh, so now we want to see that the curve intersect the x-axis at point A here. So this is A. The tangent to the curve at A intersect Y. So the tangent to the curve. Right? So the tangent to the curve, just let me draw that. Uh, the tangent to the curve uh, meet the y-axis at A. That is pretty challenging in this case. So I just try my best to draw that. So this is the tangent to the curve meet the y-axis uh, somewhere here at C, okay, stated as C. I'm not sure whether the C is actually above the 8 or not, but this is just a rough sketch. So this is the tangent. Okay, at this point I'm almost ready. Now I understand the situation. I will move on to answering the first question. Show that the equation AC, okay, AC equation AC uh, is given by this. <coughs> so the equation AC. Right. Now this is uh, pretty interesting. No? Equation A and C. Equation A and C. Whether equation A and C is the same as the tangent, we are going to uh, figure out. In a <coughs> okay, that's just a uh, rough uh, sketch here. Hold on, just let me clean up one more time. It doesn't look very convincing. Okay. Just let me redraw one more time. It will look something like this. This is more convincing. Okay. So let's uh, try this out. <coughs> so AC. Right. AC, first of all. Uh, now we try to get the coordinate for A first. Uh, that's our first step. So, for the end for A, <coughs> so at X axis, or on X axis itself, the Y is equal to 0. So all you need to do is, um, because the curve is cutting the X axis, so you will let the Y equal to 0 here. That will actually give us plus 1, minus 2 equal to 0 here. Uh, let me rewrite that uh, clearly. Else they don't, they were misunderstood. So. <coughs> okay, so um, so just let me uh, try this out here. So there's a five, a four, a two. So therefore, in this case, if you solve this, you end up with a two. So this coordinate a is two zero. Coordinate a is two zero. Now that's what we uh, have at this point. Okay. Now next, it says that the tangent to the curve A, tangent to the curve at point A, uh, intersect the y-axis at C. Right. Now we know that the tangent, tangent equation is always y equal to 
mx uh, plus c is mx plus c okay so the um, the tangent equation mx plus c then. and then we also know that this equation of tangent passes through or touching this uh, co this coordinate here right. so therefore i'm going to solve or bring in some extra information into this tangent uh, line here okay uh, referring to the tangent now um, referring to the tangent okay the equation of tangent is y equal to mx plus c here we know that it uh, I would say touches point a to zero okay. so from here you can substitute uh, the y equal to zero here okay so the y is equal to zero the x is equal to two so therefore we have uh, two m two m uh, plus c is equal to zero or you can say that c is actually equal to negative two okay. so that is the relationship between the constant and the uh, gradient here I think if you don't want to confuse yourself, uh, you can label this with a different letter since this is coordinate C. Right. <clears throat> okay, so we are almost done here. Uh, therefore, we can rewrite this equation of the tangent as, so we can rewrite this tangent as mx minus 2m. The C is negative 2 okay so we'll leave it as it is uh, because this line is a tangent to the curve there, which means it's touching one point uh, bear in mind it's only touches one point uh, that would actually uh, give you an idea uh, about how to use the discriminant b squared minus 4ac equal to c for any tangent how am i going to make use of this uh, because this is a tangent to the curve therefore i'm going to equate uh, this equation here i'm going to label that as equation number two uh, this is equation number three so i'm going to equate equation number one uh, sorry equations number two okay equation number two with the equation number three okay. that should be the same <coughs> Okay, yeah. so from here, I'm going to solve this uh, two, which means m x minus two m must be the same as ten over two x plus one minus the two here. And then, uh, as as usual, we can do a bit of uh, algebra here. So in this case, we have uh, we have. Let me see what do we have here. <laughs> okay, it's a bit. Uh, messy here to work with this so we have mx um, plus 2 minus 2m equal to 10 over 2x plus 1 yeah. okay so that's what we have and then after that we're going to uh, multiply both sides by 2x plus 1 here all right okay i hope the first part you are okay with this so i'm going to erase off this first part so that we can fill out the information for the second part right. okay so i'm going to leave this uh, space here for the working okay. so from here onward i'm going to bring this one up here so that it's easier for us to see yeah. uh, we will have um, what do we have here? We have mx multiplied with 2x plus 1 plus 2 minus 2m multiplied with 2x plus 1 here equal to a 10. So from here, I'm going to uh, simplify everything. So I have a 2mx squared plus mx plus 4x. Plus a two 
minus a 4mx minus a 2m minus a 10. Right, so that's what we have. Uh, I'll try to rearrange further. And then uh, I notice that I have mx, so negative 3mx, negative 3mx. And then I also have uh, x here also. So don't forget, uh, just let me touch up this section. Uh, so let's see what we have here. We have negative three m x. We have four x. Okay, so that will be a four minus three m x. Okay, minus three m x. Minus three m x. And then uh, what else do we have here? We have a negative eight. Uh, we have a negative two m. So negative 2m plus 8, this is 0. <clears throat> so from here onward, we are going to find out the value for m by using discriminant here. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Let's just let me clean up this section uh, due to a limited space that I have here. Uh, we'll clean this up. Okay. Let's work with this. So by using discriminant because it's tangent b squared minus 4ac equal to a zero. So therefore in this case I have 4 minus 3m squared minus 4a and then a c which is negative, so I take advantage of that. 2m plus 8 equal to a zero. Okay, here yeah, there's another uh, quadratic equations, of course, right? But never mind, it's still easy to solve uh, here, I would say. So let's try it out. So 16, uh, 24m plus 9m squared plus uh, what we have here, we have uh, 16m squared and then we have uh, uh, 64m equal to zero and then uh, we arrange that we have 25 m square plus uh, 40 m I think it's 40 m so we see yeah 40 m plus uh, 16 equal to zero okay so that's what we have at this point um, it's quite hard to simplify at this point so I try to figure out whether we can Factorize this or not. Okay, let me see whether we can factorize this. Uh, you can use calculator by all means, of course. Yep. <clears throat> so 4, 4, 20, 20. Uh, Alright, so just nice. In this case, we can write as 5m plus 4 square equal to 0. And then we found that m is actually equal to negative 4 over 5. Now, once we found this, we can conclude that uh, the equation, the equation of tangent, okay, in my equation for tangent, uh, for this is y equal to negative 4 over 5 x plus c. We know that previously c is negative 2 x. So, I just want to remind myself again. So from here, it will be plus 8 over 5. Okay, hope that's uh, clear. Okay. Intersect. Yeah, tangent intersect. Oh, okay. okay. And then uh, by changing by changing the uh, equation into a standard form, in this case, uh, we can prove that this is the equations of the uh, tangent. So from here we have uh, 4x plus 5y is equal to 8. I think just now I made a mistake here. Just uh, let me clarify one more time here. Uh, that tangent line, that tangent line is the required line. So that tangent line is the this up. So we draw everything back again. Right. 
So this tangent line, this tangent line uh, is a line that uh, touches the point A and at the same time it crosses the Y axis as C. So basically what we are trying to look for is actually the tangent line. Yeah, I mistakenly uh, thought that uh, there's another line that actually passes through A and C. But instead in this case it's supposed to be a tangent. Right? So I hope that that will not confuse you on that. Now you can see that no one like to attempt this question based on the technique, uh, based on the algebra methods that I'm using. It's very traditional, it's kind of primitive and then very lengthy. Uh, no one wants to deal with quadratic equations twice in this case. Now, uh, some of you are wondering, is there a quicker way to do this? Yes, there is. Um, I would like to hear from you though. <laughs> Yeah. Do write down your comment if you have an idea, a better idea, how we can actually solve this. Uh, so write your, do drop your comment down. I will produce another video based on your uh, idea. I'll give you a credit on that. Right. Okay. Right. Now, at this point, I'm not going to show you the alternative method. Uh, you guys are going to give me a suggestion. Okay. Now, next. <clears throat> we're going to find out the distance of AC. Uh, now we have all the informations uh, that we need at this point. Okay. Number two, the distance AC. Okay, we have the tangent equation. Just let me rewrite this. Okay, tangent equation. So all we need to do is uh, identify the coordinate for C. So at C, we know that the um, x is equal to 0. So therefore, your y would be 1.6. So, so therefore, coordinate C is actually 0, 1.6. Uh, now we can find the distance AC. Okay, so distance AC is basically 2 minus 0 squared plus... 1.6 minus c. Uh, subtraction is a, you don't have to follow the order how you subtract this because it's a square. So it's quite safe um, to get the same answer. So there's a 4 um, and then we have 1 point square here. Right? So just let me check with my GeoGebra. Uh, so let me put it up here very quickly. Hopefully it does not uh, block anything here. E. So 2.56. Final answer is 2.56. 2.56 unit. Okay. I hope it's clear to everyone. Alright. Let me clear this, we can move on to the next one. I think we still have uh, two more to go. Two more to go. Let me finish this. Okay, number nine. Okay, number nine. <clears throat> now the line, uh, the straight line equation is given here, where the k is a constant, is the tangent to the curve at the point P. You need to find the value for k, right? So maybe roughly, just let me sketch this graph. We have this. Okay, so let's look at how this graph uh, would actually look like. So again, this is a quadratic equations. I think that would be quite clear to some of you, it looks something like this. It passes through the origin here. So that is 4y equal to x squared. Okay. And then there's a tangent to the curve at point P. Right. I have no idea where is the point P, so I'm just going to make an assumption here. This is an assumption, assuming that this is point P here. And then you have a, a 
a straight line that touches that point P. And then this tangent has this equation, x over k plus a k. And then our intention is to figure out what is the coordinate P. <clears throat> now again, that ring the bell for discriminant. B squared minus 4 is equal to 0 because it's a tangent, it's touching it. <clears throat> uh, we're going to label the first uh, equation here. And then the second equation here is the first equation. Second equation is this. Okay, this is my second equation. We're going to solve this simultaneously uh, because they are meeting each other here. To do so, I will have 4 go to x squared. Right? <clears throat> uh, Alright, so up to you how you want to uh, see this. So that is actually 4 over kx plus 4k equal to x squared. And then you can rearrange that. That becomes x squared minus 4 over kx minus 4 k equal to a 0 and then now we are ready to apply the discriminant because it's a tangent therefore b squared minus 4 ac must be equal to a 0 uh, again always make it a good habit uh, sometimes I forgot this a is equal to 1 b is equal to negative 4 over k c is equal to negative 4 k but before you do any substitutions, now there will be a 16k square uh, plus a 16k equal to 0. Okay, so that's what we have at this point. Uh, now there's a common factor here, so we can simplify that as uh, this equal to a 0. And then of course we can further simplify this as k cube uh, k cube plus 1 equal to 0 now you can see that this is quite obvious k is actually equal to a negative 1 because there is only one uh, value for k here. <coughs> okay, so we have done answering the value for k I hope that is clear uh, now I would also like to challenge uh, my students especially uh, to use calculus method to solve this. Uh, do drop your idea into the comment in YouTube. Right? <clears throat> okay. So once we have obtained the K, uh, now it's quite easy now. All we need to do is just uh, substitute this K back into the original equation for attention there. Right? So just let me clean up the rest that we don't need. But we still need that original equation okay. so from here uh, since the k is negative 1 therefore the equation for tangent will be uh, negative x negative 1 that will be the equations for the tangent and then we know that the tangent and the curve meet at one point so we're going to solve that one more time we're going to call this equation number 3 now all we need to do is uh, solve these two equations here. Therefore, we have 4 negative x negative 1 equal to x squared. That will be x squared plus 4x plus a 4 equal to 0. x plus 2 squared equal to 0. x is equal to negative 2. So when x is equal to negative 2 there, uh, y will be a 1 y will be a 1 here. So therefore, we can conclude that the point P has this coordinate, negative 2, 1. Right. I hope you guys are clear on this. Right? Okay. So let's move on to the last one, I believe. I can't remember how many questions are there. <coughs> I think it's the last one, yeah. Okay, question 10. Uh, point A is given here as the arbitrary point, or rather um, abstract point in this case. And then point B is also 
given in terms of certain that that follow certain rules here, where A is a constant. Right now, our requirement is to find in terms of A the gradient of the line perpendicular to A B. Okay. Uh, now for this, we don't really need to draw uh, or sketch a diagram because uh, we can't actually figure out uh, where is this uh, point A and B. <coughs> so all we need to do is uh, first question is quite easy. Let's work out the gradient uh, of AB. Let's call this M1. So gradient of AB is 3A plus 9. Okay, let's just let me finish off that. 2A plus 4. And let's say. So if I try to simplify this, I will have a plus a 10. A plus a 4. Now that will be the gradient for the line AB. But I need to find out the gradient of a line perpendicular. So uh, let M2 be the gradient uh, gradient of line perpendicular to AB. Therefore, the product of M1 and M2 would yield negative 1 then. Uh, by rearranging, the M2, M2 would be negative A plus 4 over A plus 10. Now, that would be the gradient of a line perpendicular to A. <coughs> right now, next. Uh, number two, the last one. Okay. Now, given that the distance AB is uh, set 260, find all the possible value for A. Okay. Now, uh, the distance, yeah, given the distance is 260. Set. So therefore, we're going to make use of this. Uh, that will be 2a plus 4 minus an a squared plus uh, what we have here 3a plus 9 minus 2a minus 1. Let's try to be careful here. Okay. Now that must be equal to, because it's a square root, that must be equal to 260 root. Uh, now, at this point, you can get rid of the square root here. Okay, so due to the limited space here, I'm going to uh, proceed on to this section here. Okay. <coughs> so, from here, we can get rid of the square root. So what we have here is uh, a, that is actually a plus 4 squared. And then this is like um, a is it a a plus ten squared is equal to two hundred sixty. Now as usual, you have to do a bit of uh, expansion here. So we have two a squared here, and then uh, next what we have uh, we have eight twenty twenty eight a, and then sixteen hundred so hundred uh, sixteen. Minus 260 here equal to C. So therefore we have 2A squared plus 228A and then that is a minus, uh, what do we have? Minus 144. Yeah. We can simplify that further, of course. 72. <coughs> And then just let me try and see whether uh, it works here. <coughs> so, so 16, 12, 4, 13, 3, 3, 2. Just let me try this. So we have, um, what do we have here? Okay. Um, 6, 12. Okay, 6, 12 does not make sense. Uh, for let me see for, for one, okay. 
Okay. You can see for one uh, work, you know, that's a eight. Yeah. So it's a four eighteen here. So just nice. Uh, we have a positive here. So therefore, this is a plus eighteen. Uh, we have a minus uh, four here equal to zero. Uh, now we are looking for all the possible value for a. Therefore, all the possible value for a is either negative eighteen or a four here. All right. Now that concludes our sessions today. All right. <clears throat> As usual, drop the comment below for the two questions uh, if you are interested to propose your solution. Yeah, I'll be very happy to hear from you. Okay. Until then, okay. Enjoy math. Like you would like to enjoy a piece of cheesecake. Right? <clears throat> okay. I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you very much. Don't forget. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, do uh, click the subscription button and then uh, click on the bell sign so that you will receive a notification on any new videos that I will be uploading in the future. Right? Thank you very much.